In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you how you can put several videos on a map in a picture and picture format and connect them with a series of push pins and strings to make a dramatic effect. This comes as a request from one of my subscribers who saw a technique like this in a news video from CNN. We'd like to ask you to look at the following example, and then we'll show you some steps in producing this yourself. Let me inventory the things that I've used. I'm going to start out with a map that I got off the internet, public domain, and then an image of a push pin, and likewise an image of a rope. And then I have three separate videos that will represent what's happening in three different locations on the map. So let's take our map and put it on track number one. I'm going to click on the clock above the timeline and select the duration. We'll make it just over a minute. That's more than enough for our purposes here. Now we're going to take the videos and put them into higher number track two, three, and four. In this case, I'm going to split the audio from the video and I'm going to remove the audio. Then I'm going to change the duration and we'll make it as long as the map is. Press the end end of the map, press the end key, and then we'll split this here to do control T and we'll delete the rest of the video. So I want to do that likewise with my video on track number three and four. So I'll drag three down. Again, I'm going to, in this case, unlink the audio and video. We're going to take the audio out, highlight the audio and delete it. And then we'll split this and take the end off. We'll do that to the third one as well. And now I have my three video pieces. What we want to do with them all is we want to resize them. So I'm going to click on the first one. I'll double click to get into my PIP designer and I can pick the scale that I want. I'm going to pick a 0214, press enter. I'm going to move it around. I will move it again later and click on OK. Let's move to the video on the next track, track three. Double click to get into the PIP designer and highlight the numbers and go 0214 and press OK. Now we'll do the third one as well. So now they're all the same size. And what we're going to do then is click on OK. Now we'll simply reposition them wherever we want them. We'll say we'll have events happening in three places on the map. So now I have my video in my picture in picture. I have it in a location that I, I like. And I, again, I can move these but they're the same size and will have a different effect. So let's work with the push pin next. So I'm going to double click and click on the push pin. There's what it looks like. I'll take and drag it down on a higher number track yet. Now I'm going to do some editing. I want to make sure the time is the same duration is the same width as everything else. So now that I have my push pin selected, I'm going to double click and get into the pip designer because it has a white background and I want to remove that. So I'm going to click my chroma key tool and click on the eyedropper and click on the light white or slight gray. Then I'm going to go in color range and expand that a bit. And there I have a shadow. I'm not sure if I want the shadow or not. So let's add a new key, click on the gray and use the eyedropper again to make the shadow smaller. I think I'm going to actually try to make it almost go away. There we go. So there I have my push pin. I'll click on OK. All I have to do now is resize it. And let's make it that size. And we're going to drag and put it on the first map here. Now I have it the way I want. I'll do Control C to copy, go to a higher number track. Track 6, Control V to paste. Move to my next track up, highlight it, Control V to paste again. Now we're going to take the other copies of my push pin and we'll move one on top of each of the, of the videos. 
And if you notice, it looks pretty good. It looks like I have a push pin on each of these on a place on the map. The next is to do the same thing basically with a string. So I'm going to take the string, drag it down to a higher number track, lengthen it so it's the length of everything else. And in this case, we might want to make it a little smaller. And we can take any of the handles and rotate. And we can change the length here. Now, if you want to make this more and more precise, you need to get into the PIP Designer as well. So we're going to double click on this. And again, here we can change the length and width by looking at the numbers. So if I want to make this shorter, I could type like a six in here and we can move it around and we can change the rotation as well to get it perfect with this rotation value. Or I can move it manually here. See if I get it close enough. That's not too bad. Click on OK. I'm going to highlight it. Do Control C to copy. Go to a higher track. Control V to paste. And I'll move it to make sure we have a different one. We do. And then we'll have to do the same rotation and resizing. I will, I'll pause the video while I do that. But I just remind you we're going to do that again on a higher track. Do a copy again. Go to a higher track yet. In this case I skipped a track so I'll go back one. I'll pause the video while I rotate and resize the length of these ropes to hook them between the push pins. Now we're going to summarize what we have here. If we look on our tracks, we have our map on track one. We have videos on two, three, and four. We have three push pins on five, six, and seven, and we have three ropes on eight, nine, and 10. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to produce a range. So I need to select either at the beginning or the end. I can have my playhead. I'm going to drag to the other end. Now I have a range. I'm going to click on Produce Range. And when I do that, it will attempt to produce that. I'm going to just call this Map Number 11. And we'll produce it as an MPEG-4. Click on Start. When it's done producing, we'll get back to the video. Now we'll click on the Back to Edit button. And we'll notice it's imported my video in the Media Room. I'm going to drag it down and put it adjacent to what we've worked on before. Now I want, what I want to do is add my music. Normally we'd have narration, but I'll just stick my music track on here. And then we're going to take this segment here and we're going to do some crop, zoom, and pan with it. So I click on my tools. I get on my crop, zoom, and pan tool. Now we'll start out with full screen and I'll move my playhead over just a little bit. I'm going to duplicate the keyframe. I click on the double dots. It will duplicate the previous keyframe since there's only one. So we'll start out full screen. And then we'll move over a little bit farther and we'll set a new keyframe. And this keyframe, we're going to tighten up on my first image at the bottom. So we'll make it this size. Make it so you can see the image and the push pin. And that's where we're going to start. Maybe a little smaller will work. That's just about perfect. Okay, we've got that. Now we're going to focus on that for a little, a little time. So I'm going to click over here. We'll click our double diamond to duplicate the previous keyframe. Then we'll take a small amount of time where we move over. Click this, click a single diamond. And now we'll move this over to the second element. We'll move over just a little bit farther. And we'll do a duplicate previous keyframe because we're going to freeze on that a bit. And then we set the third keyframe here. And so we're going to click here. Now we're going to move over to our third video and the push pin. Set that keyframe. We'll stay on there for a while by duplicating the key keyframe again. And then we'll move a little bit farther and then we're going to back out, set a new keyframe. And we'll set our position value on the right at 0.5. And Y will be 0.5, that will center it in the screen. And we'll set our value here for size to 1, which will make it full screen. Then we'll click on OK. We start at the beginning. And it zooms in on the first picture. This is what's happening at this location. Moves to the second. And then moves to the third. I didn't have it hold on the second the way I should, but you get the idea. So I can go back into my image here again. 
and click on tools again for crop zoom and pan that one here okay I need to insert another keyframe to hold it there and then I'll move the other ones over so I'll click here click on duplicate previous keyframe We'll just slide these over a little bit each, give them the right amount of time. And that fixed my problem. So let's try to play this segment again. We'll see what it looks like. We start on full screen. Zoom in on the first again. We slide down the rope to the second one. Focus on that. Then we move to the third one. Focus on the last one. And then we zoom back out again. So that's a way to apply those techniques in CyberLink PowerDirector.